The journey to Cherokee territory was tedious and slow, with many difficulties to be endured. The greater, therefore, was our relief when on the first day of March, we safely reached the Cherokee settlement called Hold Hill. My sacrifice of the comforts of home is a requirement of this mission and one that I make willingly, for I have long desired to venture again into the unknown wilds, taking the light of our Savior to the Aborigines of America. The only name I had was Patience. Mr. Hold bought me because I once cooked for white people so I could make him feel like a real white slave owner, but he kept me because I made him feel powerful. It seems my life and labor is not enough to satisfy a man like Mr. Hold. He demands everything I can give, and then when that's gone, he keeps on taking. Beyond Mr. Holt's home and fields lies a wild mountain fastness. We are sequestered at a far remove from Christian civilization, and Mr. Holt behaves like a heathen lord of his manor. When Mr. Holt needed something doing, I was the one he turned to. My hands fixed the things he broke and played the fiddle he danced to. When Mrs. Gamble needed her cuttings carried to Kentucky, of course she turned to me. One day in April, just after the rain, I was walking through the forest. Barefoot, I gathered wild potatoes and onions for dinner. There was no way I could have known what Mr. Hold would do when he fell upon me, knocking those potatoes and onions across the forest floor. I've never felt so alone. But I saw it happen and I vowed to do everything in my power to help her. Meanwhile, among the Negroes, Isaac is suspected of taking his leave. Many of the other slaves now come to me, offering samples like prayers that I might send them on a delivery next. Mr. Holt's fury knows no bounds. I pray the Savior would only have mercy on him and free him from the hands of the evil enemy who has him completely under his power.